I hate to break it to you, but you're not perfect. None of us are. Our memories don't work like a computer program where you have a database and you type in times that this happened and then they all come up and you can look at the entire list and you know everything that's there. Instead, memory works in a, a strange and convoluted sort of way where associations fire off neurons and bring up other ideas and other thought patterns into your mind. And you don't always think of everything you should be thinking of when you try to remember something. For example, how many times have you said, oh wait, don't I owe you 20 bucks? And you find out, oh no, you had paid that three weeks ago. You just forgot about it. And now that you're reminded, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Or other times you think you paid it off and they said, no, 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 you still owe me that money. Oh, you're right. I was thinking of that other time that I owed you 20 bucks. Here you go. Memory is not perfect. And there's this thing called the availability heuristic, which really screws with you. And that's the fact that things that you dwell on, as an example, tend to come to mind more easily. So if you think, let me rephrase that. When bad things happen to you, some people think about them over and over. I can't believe that that happened. Other people, when something good happens to them, they think about that over and over. Some people, most people, are probably somewhere in between. If you think about one type of thing more than the other, it's easier to remember it because every time you remember something, it strengthens that connection in your brain. And it's easier to remember it the next time. And it just pops into your head the time after that. That's how memory works. And this causes a lot of problems. Because when you're trying to think about, well, how often do good things versus bad things happen to me? If you're the kind of person who dwells on bad things, you remember the bad things. And if you're the kind of person who dwells on the good things, you remember the good things. It's called the availability heuristic. It's a shortcut that your mind takes. Shortcuts are great. Heuristics that the human mind has developed work fantastically well a lot of the time. However, they can really crash and burn you out other times. Have you ever actually taken a list of things and done it methodically, almost scientifically, and found out that the numbers are very different than you thought they were? You thought that bad things happened or good things happened or that plane crashes happened at such a rate per year and you found out that the numbers were drastically different. That's because when you're trying to get that sort of feeling, how often does something happen? How big of a problem is that thing? What your brain is doing is quickly, without you realizing it, trying to pull up that database listing. But unlike a computer, the things you've thought about the most come up quickly and the other things might not come up at all until you make a circuitous route around your brain thinking about something completely different and then, oh yeah, and then there was that time that other thing happened. That's how your brain works. Not like a database, but like a net of associations where thinking about blue fish might not remind you of all the blue fish that you've seen. And sometimes thinking about something completely, seemingly unrelated, like fish, will trigger your memory about a blue fish you saw. Sorry, I meant a fridge. Something like a fridge will trigger your memory into like, oh yeah, remember that weird fridge that I saw a blue fish in? Oh. There's another blue fish I wasn't thinking of before. That's how conversations happen, where you go off of topic by making random connections and then all of a sudden you find yourself back on the topic because you remembered something that wasn't pulled up out of your computer-like database before. The availability heuristic means that when you're thinking about news and current events, when you're thinking about events in, in your lifetime or that's happening to other people, you're not pulling up all the information. And when you feel, yeah, that happens a lot, or no, that doesn't happen a whole lot, that feeling, that belief that you have is affected by what associations your brain was able to make and how often you make them. 
This is one of the ways where our brain kind of tricks us into thinking things that aren't true. Like in the 90s and in the 2000s and sometimes even today, people still think crime is climbing, when in fact crime has been generally declining and is, I think still, if not this year, then certainly a couple years ago, the low, violent crime is still the lowest it's been since the day that I was born. It just kept dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. And yet, because we see news reports of violent crimes more often than anything else, as often as possible, from wherever in the world we can pull something and make it even remotely relevant to the viewing audience, it gets locked into your brain. And your brain thinks it must be happening a lot because I'm seeing it all the time. When really it's happening less. We're just seeing nearly every example that's remotely newsworthy and sometimes examples that aren't. So don't always believe everything you think.